Hello again and welcome back to another episode of Garage Science. Uh, this time we're going to take a little bit of a different approach to uh, talking about copper plating and I'm just going to explain uh, some of the reasons why there's uh, best practices uh, that exist for how you orient your part, how it's uh, submerged in the electrolyte, the size of the electrodes, the shape of the part. We're going to talk about all that and some of the best practices uh, in doing that. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'll try and do this relatively quickly. Usually Whenever you see uh, anyone talk about electroplating, whether it's in a textbook or anywhere else, you always have uh, a cathode, usually one on either side, or just one, and then you have a part in the center, and that's your anode, which is negatively charged. So you apply your positive charge to your cathodes, which are made of copper, and you apply a negative charge to your part, which is uh, what you're trying to plate the copper to. And then all that is submerged in a solution that's filled with copper electrolytes. Now, as we talk about this, we're gonna talk about uh, a lot about electric fields and how they are shaped within the plating bath. Not getting into a lot of detail about them, just talking about them uh, as an overview and just as a general understanding of, of how they work. Uh, but uh, in general, the places where electric fields are stronger is gonna be where you get more plating and places where the uh, electric fields are weaker is places where you'll get less plating. So basically how the electric field is gonna look in this solution is you're going to have field lines going from the positive to the negative, from the cathode to the anode, kind of like that, right? And at the center of the part, it's gonna, the field lines are gonna be uh, pretty much parallel to each other, right? And the copper ions are gonna flow along those electric field lines and they're gonna deposit on the part. But at the edges, you're gonna get something a little closer to this. Right, so at the edges, you basically get this curling action occurring in the electric field as uh, the electric field lines are trying to get from the uh, cathodes to the anode to plate this uh, outside edge. And uh, essentially what ends up happening here is you get these electric fields that concentrate uh, around the edge, right? And uh, essentially what you're gonna get is more copper ions flowing in this direction and attaching to the part there. So you'll get heavier plating on the edge and uh, less plating, uh, relatively speaking, less plating uh, in the center, right? So what you'll eventually have is you'll have copper plating that's mildly thick in the center and then it's gonna bulge out on the edges, right? And we do things to the electrolyte solution, we add levelers, to the solution to prevent this sort of thing from happening. In a different video, I'll talk about uh, how the chemistry kind of works with that levelers and why uh, they do what they do. Uh, but for now, levelers are generally used to uh, prevent this sort of action from occurring. Um, but there's things you can do to prevent that from occurring. Uh, and that gets into how you design the parts that you want to plate. So in general, if you're trying to plate, part with a sharp corner, you want that corner to actually be rounded as much as possible, right? And maybe that's just a small radius, uh, maybe that's all your part is able to, uh, to actually have and you know keep its appearance or tolerance, but it should be rounded as much as possible. Because what ends up happening is this corner, you end up having field lines that concentrate around that corner and all the copper ions not all of them, but more copper ions tend to flow into that point and you get, like we've talked about before, there's a bulging there, right? And so as it bulges out, it protrudes more and then it concentrates even more of the electric field uh, around it. And you get more current density in the area, more copper ions depositing there and it, it bulge just grows, right? So you'll, it won't be as even. Whereas if it was curved, then, you know, maybe it's, it's just not quite as concentrated. 
will probably still be slightly more concentrated than on the flat portions, but it'll be less concentrated around that curve. And so your copper ions will deposit more evenly uh, along that. Similarly, if you have uh, an inside corner, right, you wanna curve that as much as possible. Now, if you have a hole, so say we're looking uh, side view here, say you're trying to do a channel, you want uh, this distance to be as big as possible, and you want this distance to be as short as possible, right? And all within uh, whatever tolerances are required by the part that you're trying to plate. So you want the gap to be as large as possible and the depth to be as short as possible. And what that does is it allows the electric field lines as they come in to uh, avoid concentrating and uh, um, getting an uneven uh, deposition of copper in that channel. Same thing if you're trying to uh, do ribs, right? This is the top view of ribs that you're trying to copper plate. Uh, it's best if you can round the edges and if you can even maximize the distance between them, right? So if you can space them a little further away, then it allows the deposition to uh, even out within those, those ribs. The other aspect is uh, if you can to avoid protrusions in the part, right? So if you have part say like this and it's got this protrusion out here then especially depending on how you orient this um, it could play uh, more or less even uh, but it'd be best if you did say this part right so if this was your first part and then you made this your second part and then you just put them together after you plated them individually then you would actually get a more even plate um, and that's more significant too, if you start talking about now you have even more parts possibly sticking off the end of that, right? So depending on the shape of your part, you want to avoid having uh, excessively large protrusions because um, basically what will end up happening is, say you have your electrode down here and your electrode up here, right? This surface down here is gonna preferentially plate more than say this surface, right? And the side of this, sphere is going to plate more preferentially than the outside edge right so in order to get an even plate it's best to avoid excessively large protrusions uh, on your parts all right so talking about part orientation if you were to have a part that is shaped like this and you were to orient it in the back like this then you would end up having your electric field lines, you know, going here. They'd curve around the edges a little bit, right? But you'd get mostly even, uh, at least around this area, it would all be relatively uh, level. Uh, however, but since this is so much closer to the electrode, it's much, I uh, got much, much stronger electric field lines going to it. And so uh, the plane is gonna be much, much heavier uh, around this area and that is going to direct some of the current density uh, towards this area and it may cause areas like this that are kind of uh, distant and then they're sharp uh, inside corners they may not getting any they may not get any plating at all so uh, it'd be better for a part like this if you had it oriented say this way right and Basically what you want to try and do is keep uh, as many surfaces as possible equidistant away from the electrodes. Uh, and in the same way, it's the same reason why it's better to use uh, two electrodes, uh, just because if you were to only have one, then you would have all your electric uh, field lines, you know, doing some number like this, but then the ones on the back side, you're going to be doing some number like this. and. The electric field lines going to the back of the part are going to be much weaker than the ones going to the front of the part that's exposed to the uh, cathode and so because of that you'll get very little plating on the outside of on the back side of the part and the front of the part is going to have much heavier amounts of plating so you want to avoid situations like that all right next we want to talk about uh, electrode size so 
So you have two electrodes and a little part. Generally, the rule of thumb is you want about a two to one ratio uh, for the size of your cathode to the size of your part. So the surface area of your cathode, right, both your cathodes added up, should be about twice the surface area of your part. All right, that's just a rule of thumb, depending on the exact solution, uh, electrolyte that you're using, it could vary there, but usually it's between uh, a one to one ratio and a two to one ratio. And what that does is it causes uh, the copper that's coming off of your cathode to basically uh, dissolve into the solution um, at the same rate that it's uh, depositing on the part. If you have too large of a electrode, some of the uh, copper ion is, uh, some of that copper is dissolving into solution and it's not really being dragged through uh, the electric field line to the part uh, because the current density and other places is so high that it's not really uh, attracting that copper ion. So it's really dissolving off of the electrode and just uh, going into solution and what that does is it causes your copper electrode uh, correction your copper ion concentration to increase right it's going to go up and what you'll see is you'll start off with a mildly blue or slightly dark blue uh, electrolyte and it'll get progressively darker and darker blue as more copper is dissolved uh, and eventually it's going to start turning a little green and so uh, that's really why you want to maintain a one-to-one to two-to-one -to -one ratio on your electrodes. All right, so I'm gonna go over uh, the references that I use to generate this information. I highly encourage you to uh, delve into it. I'll put a link uh, to, in the video description that you can go to and download this PDF yourself. Uh, but I will bring that up and give you a peek. All right. So this is the document that I uh, gleaned most of this information from. There's other documents you can get uh, on the internet, but this one's uh, free to download. It's the Electroplating, a guide for designers and engineers, and is basically developed by uh, the Committee for Promotion of Electroplating and is sponsored by the Institute of Metal Finishing. Um, and so they, it's basically a summation of many different uh, copper plating uh, processes and but it does have some good uh, images and it also uh, has some pretty good information so uh, I'm gonna just scroll through here to a couple of uh, worthy images some of the ones that uh, helped me develop most of the talking points for this so uh, first is uh, this when I talk about parts shape and how the electric field binds and uh, essentially uh, current distribution are affected by the shape of your part. Uh, this is a pretty good illustration for how shape uh, is affected by that. And then a little further, uh, talking about part shape and orientation to the electrode, right? Uh, here's their parallel plate uh, with the part in the center uh, example where you got a build up on the edge and not so much plating in the center and then having a pointed surface uh, closer to the electrode, right? You get much uh, heavier plating at that point and eventually it's gonna round it out. So uh, these are good reference and if you read the actual text, uh, it gives a further description of how these processes work. And then finally, one last I wanna show you is the, the best practices. Uh, so kind of what I talked about, avoiding sharp corners, uh, inside edges and uh, inside corners and outside corners. Uh, if you've got a, you know, uh, divot or really any sort of bend, you want to make that as curved of a bend and uh, as least sharp as possible. But yeah, this is uh, several, uh, I think it's yeah, it's about 60 pages long. Uh, it's not super, super long, but there's a lot of information on it, more than just acid copper plating, so it's a good overview uh, information. So I highly recommend you to, to download that and I'll put the link in the video description. But I hope this helped you understand more about the uh, kind of chemistry and the physics that uh, go on while you're plating something and that will help you uh, design your plating and your parts uh, a little better so that way you get better results. Thanks for watching and remember to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.